the midterm elections are over and the votes are in. And this year, millions of dollars were spent on campaign ads. But which ones work? I'm Matt Amory. Coming up on WVU News, I'll tell you why we're spending billions of extra dollars driving on roads just like this. I'm Joel Tranko. The balance of power in Congress has shifted. I'll tell you what this means for local Democrats. WVU News starts now. Nearly half of all West Virginians cast their ballots this year, and a lot of familiar faces are going back to Washington. I'm Jeff Bowers. And I'm Heather Yared, and you're watching WVU News, a newscast produced by journalism students at West Virginia University. After some interesting races here in the Mountain State, many incumbents will be returning to Washington. That's right, Jeff, but the campaigns took a negative turn this year, and one candidate under fire was Congressman Alan Mullahan. I was at Mullahan's headquarters on election night to find out what those attack ads were all about. 23 years in Congress for Alan Mullahan was quiet until this year's midterm elections. Republican challenger Chris Wakeham spent nearly $115,000 on campaigning, much of it going towards negative ads. Every campaign, you're appreciative of winning. This one was particularly appreciative because of the attacks, the out-of-state attacks, the in-state attacks. It's just been a terrible campaign. Time for a change. Alan Mullahan has been too busy helping himself. And Democratic officials say once Republicans went negative, Democrats had to fight back. Wake him up lied about being a Gulf War vet. Lies about his Harvard degree. Marion County Democratic right. Chairman Belinda Biafort isn't a fan of negative campaigns. Campaigning, but she does believe it works. Congressman Mullahan came back out, gave his tax returns, explained to everybody what was going on. They went away and you never heard from them again. But then this billionaire from Texas comes in and throws five million into the campaign, and you know that's supposed to change the world. But Congressman Alan Mullahan and Republican challenger Chris Wakeham aren't the only ones that have spent big bucks to get your vote. An estimated 2.8 billion dollars went in to the midterm elections. And all this publicity may have encouraged people to get out and vote. But it really appears that West Virginians and Americans are repudiating these negative, terribly negative And Democrats made their voices loud and clear by re-electing Congressman Alan Mullahan with 64% of the votes. Mullahan captured almost 100,000 votes, and his competitor Chris Wakeham received just over 54,000. And Mullahan's win helped Democrats take back Congress, and it's been 12 years since the party controlled both houses. Joel Tranko tells us more on how this change will affect the Mountain State. The power in Washington has found a new balancing point. Voters from the Mountain State and around the country sent a clear message this election year, and that message was change. Democratic supporter Stephanie Dietrio says now she wants to see some accountability. My main issue is with the President of the United States and the way we're handling this war. So if the Democrats kick over Congress, I do hope that they hold him accountable for what's going on in Iraq, and I hope that they uh, make some movement there and, and hold his feet to the fire. And Stephanie is one of 464,000 voters to cast a ballot in West Virginia this November. Many voters in the state elected Democrats over Republicans by an average margin of two to one. We've, we've got an administration that needs to have the reins pulled in. I believe in a balance of power somewhere, and we have no balance of power in Washington, and somewhere we have to get this adjusted. And for Democrats, the midterm elections were critical nationwide, with 33 Senate seats and 36 governorships up for grabs. The Democrats seized the opportunity by capturing 51 seats in the Senate and 229 seats in the House. This gives them a chance to turn their plans into new legislative action. Joel Tranko, WBU News, Fairmont.